it dominates our lives. The question we must ask ourselves is whether this dependency on the digital world is helping or hurting us, particularly in respect to freedom of speech and governance of that freedom. Advances in information technology have drastically affected protest efforts in the developed world, benefiting both authorities and activists. Protests typically have a connotation of being violent. So does digital technology enhance or reduce the ferocity of public protest? What we hope to determine is who gains more from this now readily available digital technology, the police or the protesters. Developments in digital technology certainly provide a new ease to governments for the monitoring of protest. The internet allows officials to more readily determine which organizations may pose a threat and which are harmless, more or less. The innovation of video surveillance offers the ability to respond immediately to spontaneous gatherings, causing a drastic decrease in reaction time. We tracked that drone from News Chopper 2, and that drone was able to use a high-powered camera to track us. Those cameras can actually look into people's homes or even follow them in moving cars, which raises all sorts of new questions. The Internet is perhaps the best resource for police in obtaining information on protesters. It provides an entirely available resource for tracking individuals or activities. Groups attempting to evade government scrutiny are at a serious disadvantage as they are forced to reduce their presence and public profile drastically. For at least a year before the 2004 Republican National Convention, teams of undercover New York City police officers traveled to cities across the country, Canada, and Europe to conduct covert observations of people who planned to protest at the convention. They made friends, shared meals, swapped email messages, and then filed daily reports with the department's intelligence division. Other investigators mined internet sites and chat rooms. Under a United States Supreme Court ruling, undercover surveillance of political groups is generally legal, but the police in New York, like those in many other big cities, have operated under special limits as a result of class action lawsuits filed over police monitoring of civil rights and anti-war groups during the 1960s. On the other hand, digital technology is incredibly helpful to protesters as well. It affords them almost infinite opportunity to communicate with supporters and prospective supporters of their cause. Networking sites such as Facebook and Twitter allow for rapid dissemination of information. Protesters can now easily and instantly communicate meeting times, locations, and ideas to anyone they wish. While the internet offers an outlet for publicizing information to wide audiences around the world, mass text messaging allows for more private communication between group members. The accessibility of portable video cameras allows protesters to document police behavior during protests. If policemen are reacting brutally towards civilians, it is almost a guarantee that the act is caught on camera. In London, British police officers could lose consent of the public unless they abandon misguided approaches to public protests that are considered unfair, aggressive, and inconsistent. During the G20 protests in 2009, the police were accused of aggressively policing protests after they were caught on video using batons to lash out at protesters. Event, but a tough economy is pushing people to the brink. Police surrounded the crowd and used tear gas to quell the unrest. Advances in communications technology have come to play an integral role in modern protest. For protesters, it is now easier to organize and conduct protest movements.
State police say the two men used Twitter and cell phones to help protesters avoid getting rounded up after they were given what the police call a lawful order to disperse. The attorney for one of them doesn't deny that his client was communicating with protesters, but says he was simply exercising his right to free speech. During these protests, a mass texting service called TextMob was developed and utilized by protesters to maintain constant communication among its members. This service acted as a mailing list and, with a simple text message, TextMob users were able to provide their entire network with locations, times, quiz actions, and other such updates, often at rates as fast as one text per minute. Understandably, the availability of such information allows for protesters to better organize their efforts as well as react effectively to the actions of police. What role does media play in allowing the other students to know about the protests? I mean, when I was there five to ten years ago, it was mainly through the TV and the radio that you heard about it, and through maybe your student association. I would say that today probably the email uh, plays a big role in communicating faster between the channels. I mean, I think the main impact of the of the internet and the communications now is that you know before it was only the TV and the radio that decided to show what they wanted to show from the riots and from the protest. Now with the internet, anybody can show whatever they want, and they and it can be put on the internet and be seen as long as they wish it to be seen. So it has a greater and long, longer lasting impact on uh, that particular, on the particular protest, you know. So I guess, you know, it's all, it's all communications, you know. Protest is communicating, communicating discontent. If you have the internet, then you can make that communication even bigger and wider. So it's, it's, it's a good combination, I'm sure. Theorists Jack Goldsmith and Tim Wu discuss similar points in their book, Who Controls the Internet? Every great technological innovation has the potential to lower the cost of violating law. The interesting and difficult questions are how such new techniques of control will fare against techniques of avoidance, and what the ultimate result of such a race will be. New technology helps both sides as much as it hurts. However, the innovation so far seems to be helping protesters just a little bit more. protest when she was shot with rubber bullets in the back and a leg. The good news about being uh, being able to watch you guys live on TV is that lady with the red dress. Yeah. Yeah.